we're pretty clear that over this next decade, every company, every nonprofit, every impact project, every government department will be structured this way just because it's just that much better. So Liam, let's kick it off with what is an exponential organization? No one better than yourself to, to share that. So this all started at Singularity University when we were running these one week executive programs and people would go, and actually those are the highest rated educational programs in the world, okay? So people would come to the end of the week and go, okay, I got the disruption. What the hell do I do on Monday? <laughs> and the book was basically a response to that. And what we did was we scanned 150 to 200 of the biggest unicorns in the world to say, how are they doing this? How are they scaling so fast? Because starting from about 2008, we saw a breed of organizations scaling at a pace that we never seen before. And that's what we mean by an exponential organization. Now, we have now, the book came out in 2014, the first version, and we now have almost 10 years of data and statistics. So for example, we had an original list of the top 100 EXOs. How do they do over this last seven, eight, nine years? The, the, about half of them have gone IPO or being acquired, which is an unbelievable uh, success rate for organizations. But most importantly, when we first launched the book, we actually ranked the Fortune 100, the biggest 100 companies in the US, ranked them against this model. Okay? And we did a segment on CNBC Squawk Box presenting this index, basically saying, uh, here is a ranking of the most purpose-driven, flexible, agile, scalable org structures. To what extent is IBM using lean startup thinking? To what extent is GE purpose-driven or not? And we came up with this index. Over the last seven years, we've been tracking which of the top 10 organizations that use these characteristics and attributes the most and which use them the least. Uh, Chandra Nagpal, one of our community members, worked a lot with UBS, et cetera, right, uh, did this analysis looking right into the stock market engines to get real data. And then over the seven year period, we compared the results. How did the top 10 most flexible and agile versus the least flexible and least agile do over a seven year period. And remember this is the for just in the Fortune 100. So in this over seven years, the top 10 outperformed the bottom 10 by like almost three times on revenue growth, right? Six times on higher on profitability, 11 times higher on return on equity. But the killer number was shareholder returns, or what they call CAG or compound annual growth rate. The top 10 in the Fortune 100 most EXO friendly outperformed the bottom 10 least EXO friendly over seven years by 40 times, right? We had to like triple check the data because it sounds so ridiculous. So that's the difference between a, and why? Because as the external world becomes more volatile, which we can see, your ability to adapt is gonna drive market value, right? And now we can prove that six ways to Sunday. So that's the basis and thesis and the data we've been gathering. We now have thousands of stories like Genius Group with Roger Hamilton, which went from zero, followed the book, um, one of your A360 members, uh, and now has gone public. Right? So there's thousands of stories like that. We're pretty clear that over this next decade, every company, every nonprofit, every impact project, every government department will be structured this way just because it's just that much better. Yeah, when people talk about a why, why should you be thinking about becoming an exponential organization? I mean, the numbers are the ones that- The numbers are crazy. And it's really important to frame what's happening in the world that makes these new organizations go and what's the shift that's happened. So Peter, why don't you take us through the fundamental sea change and what's happened in the world? 